Today on my channel, we are going to copycat a floral chandelier from the website shopwildthings.com using mostly Dollar Tree items with a little help from Amazon.com for a total construction price of about $50 when it is currently being sold on the internet for $279.99. Stay tuned. For this project, you will need one 8 count pack of AA batteries. You will need four of these combination chain with locks. You will need four of these string LED lights. You will need two packs of zip ties. Yours will not need to be this long. I have these two packs left over from another project, so this is why I'll be using these today. You will also need a serving bowl cover. Not the bowl, just the cover. And you will also need this wreath form. To embellish our project, you will need some strings of crystal garland. And I am going to be topping my string with this glass crystal pendant. Of course, you will need your flowers, and for today's project, I'm going to be using wisteria in the colors of white, green, and purple. And of course, you will need your handy dandy tools, and today, we are going to be using our soldering iron. Let's get crafting! So the first thing we have to do in preparation for our project is we are going to take the plastic cover off of these chains simply by cutting it off. And as you see, I already started mine and I'm just finishing it on camera for you. Once you have taken off that plastic form that is on that chain, we now need to dispense of or dispose of the two lock mechanisms. And to do this, all we're going to do is find where the link opens and we're going to use two pliers to help us get those rings apart. So what I'm doing here now is trying to find where it opens and then I'm going to use one pliers to hold it and then the other pliers I'm going to use to bend that link to open it. Once I have opened it, I can take that lock mechanism and throw it away or save it for another project. And then I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. Again, seeing where it opens, taking one pliers to hold it. Of course, in my left hand, since I'm right-handed. And then with my right hand, I'm going to open that link. Once I get the link open, take off the lock mechanism, dispose of it and my chain is ready. Of course, we have to do this four times, so I'm gonna get that done, and then I'm gonna come back to show you our next step. So now that we have prepared our chains, what we are going to do is we are going to prepare the dome of our chandelier. And to do that, we're going to be combining our wreath form with our dome lid. Now if you notice, as crafters, we like to tend to dome everything and put the dome part down, but really and truly, this part, I need to have it facing up because I need to have access to those wires underneath when it is time to string my garlands as well as string my flowers. And so as you can see here, I have my wreath form facing up and I have place my plastic form underneath but to glue it down I'm going to flip it over the other way and I'm going to place my hot glue on top of the form allowing gravity to do its work so that that hot glue is making contact with the plastic as well as with the metal form. So I'm going to do this on each of those six joints as you can see one two three a copious amount of hot glue four five and six 
And then once I have done that, I'm just going to allow that glue to sit there and dry. Of course, I'm using a high heat glue gun. And so I would just caution you, of course, to be careful with your fingers. Once I have gotten those joints in place, what you see I'm doing here now is I'm going around the base of that form with my E6000 glue. And what this is going to do, of course, is, <clears throat> excuse me, as this project cures or over time, rather, excuse me, that E6000 glue will continue to cure. And again, just another layer of caution, I'm going to take now some hot glue and place on top of that E6000 glue to make sure that when we start to form this chandelier, that dome is going nowhere. And of course, once I've placed my hot glue on top, I'm simply going to leave this and allow it to dry maybe even for an hour before I come back to it. So now that we are sure that our dome is dry and it is not going anywhere, what I'm going to show you how to do now is to affix our lights. And to do this, we are going to use four of those 10 string of LED lights that we got from the Dollar Tree. Now this is what it looks like in the box. They come with pendants on them. Some of them are dragonflies. Some of them are snowflakes. Um, this is what it looks like out of the box, but let me show you what it looks like with the decoration on it. And quite simply, all it is to expose that light is pulling off those little plastic pieces. And here you have what we need. Now, what I'm going to use the center of that lid for is going to be the base for where I'm going to put our battery packs for that lighting. And I need to get four of them placed on that flat surface. So there's one, two, three, and the last one will hang off a little bit. But what we're going to do now is we're going to use our soldering iron to place holes in our dome so we can poke those little LED lights in it. And so what I'm doing here is getting my soldering iron. And today we're using another attachment that comes with it. It is almost like a blunted edged tool. There is no other way for me to describe it. But here we are going in with that blunt end tool on 350 degrees and literally because that lid is so slight all it takes is almost one and a half seconds place the tool on the plastic tss, there it is place your light in the hole string your other light i'm using a pattern of top bottom bottom top as you can see place your soldering iron on the plastic place your light in the hole. And we're just going to continue this process until I can get all of my 40 lights strung on this fixture. So here it is, we have placed 10 of our lights on this fixture. And as you can see, those 10 lights are taking up about a fourth of that dome. And so we're going to be using four lights that to take up one fourth of that dome each. And I'm just going to continue that process and come back to show you what it looks like. Now here we have our dome with all of our lights strung. And as you can see, what I'm going to do to attach those compartments to our dome is I'm simply going to glue them down with hot glue. I did the first one, however, I did not do the other three because what's gonna happen as I start to lay my flowers, I'm actually gonna pull all of those off so that I have free range to turn and twist and place my flowers how I need them to be. And so I'm just going to pull them out and I'll come back to show you how we start to lay our flowers. All right. So as you can see in my haste to lay that down and using that high heat glue gun, that 
battery pack is not coming up so I have just tied some ribbon around those lights to kind of keep them out of the way and we are now going to continue so now what we're gonna do is we're going to make the halo if you will or dome of our chandelier and what I'm showing you is is how these wisterias actually come and all I have done is cut them at the first joint each and that is going to give me the length of flowers that I need now again I shared with you earlier that I am using these extra long zip ties and only because I had them left over from another project and of course what you see me doing here is stringing my zip tie over one of the length of my wisteria flowers and here you can see that I'm pulling it tight and of course course what do you think I'm gonna do I'm gonna cut off the excess so here's to using what you have if you have short zip ties that's good you won't have as much cutting to do as I did but if you have long ones there is a fix for it the scissors and so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna lay these green wisterias down in layers the first layer as I'm showing you the second layer and then the third layer and as you can see you can see that zip tie poking through but what I'm showing you now is as you continue to lay your flowers more than likely all of those zip ties will be covered up and so I'm just very gently going in finding my placement not trying to place them too tight or rather I should say stretch them too tight because you want your chandelier to have a nice airy breezy look and so just making sure before I pull it tight to get all of my flowers out of the way and once I have tightened it where it cannot go anymore I am just going to snip now hindsight is 2020 when you're cutting don't use your scissors <laughs> use either your wire cutters or your plant cutters because the scissors are long and I lost a few flowers because of it so once again just going in tightening it making sure that I'm not getting my wisteria pulled too taut and then cutting off the excess of that zip tie and so I'm just gonna continue this process going all the way around the first layer all the way around the second layer all the way around the third layer and then I will come back to show you what that part looks like So here is what our wreath form looks like with all of our wisteria placed on it. And as you can see, I still have some empty patches back there and I will definitely have to fill that in. But what we are going to do now is we are going to string our wisteria lens onto our wreath form, which is going to give us the look of flower garlands. And to do this, you can see where I am bunching up my stems and I'm trying to find one of those joints in which or under which to place my flowers and so I tried to bite off a little bit more than I could chew <laughs> as you can see here and I tried to get all four of them under at the same time and of course it was not working and so I opted then to do one at a time and voila I got it to work so just stringing my flowers in the stems one at a time holding it to make sure it doesn't fall out here is my second stem and for my stems I'm using a combination of white and purple in the original version that I showed you that one was in plain white and of course they say that you can order your um, floral chandelier in any color of your choosing so that just goes to show you again you can customize anything you do our motto guys why buy when you can DIY it's just a matter of ordering your raw materials 
All right, so now that I have placed all of my stems where I want them to, it is now only a matter of going in and zip tying those stems to that frame. Now this is the first one that I did and again hindsight is 2020 and I was able to do the others like that. Instead of going in straight across horizontally like I did, I should have gone in on the diagonal and that would have given me much more leverage, leverage that I needed. Of course off camera when I figured it out for my other stems or my other hands, when I figured it out, I was able to go back and fortify that one that I did on camera, but that's just an FIY for you or FYI. So now that I have placed that, of course, we know that our floral bunches and stems come with wire embedded in them. All it is a matter of doing is bending that wire to make sure when we turn our chandelier right side up or the right way, those bunches of flowers will hang straight down. So I am now going to continue the process, putting bunches on all of the six other joints and I'll be back to show you what it looks like. So here we have our chandelier that has all of its branches placed on it. And what I'm going to show you here is how to attach your chain. Of course, again, hindsight is 2020 and were I to do this project again for an, a, per, a person, a client, a customer, myself, I would definitely put the chains on first. So now what we're going to do to attach this chain is simply the reverse of what we did when we took off the locking mechanisms. We are going to open that link using our two pliers, using one as our fulcrum and one in our stronger hand as our force. And then we're going to attach it to one of our joints. All right, and as you can see, I have enlisted the use of my pliers once again to help me get that link onto that foundation. And now that I have gotten that link onto that joint, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reattach the rest of the chain to it. And then I'm going to use my pliers to close that link back how we need it to be so that it will be able to hold up the weight of that chandelier without breaking or another link falling out of it and so here I am I'm showing you what is one way that you could actually hang this in your ceiling or outside in your garden and it is by the use of an S ring and all or rather excuse me an S hook and all you see that I'm doing here is just placing those links on that S hook and that S hook would then be attached to another hook so that it will be able to bear the weight of this chandelier. And here it is our partial reveal where I am showing you how I have already strung my crystal garlands and simply all I did was attach them to the base of that form, wreath form, the open wires that were underneath. And of course I haven't yet fluffed or straightened out my flowers, but I will of course do so before I show you the final reveal. And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to go affix, put my lights on, clean up any glue fronds that are there, and then I will come back to show you what our finished project looks like. Well, there you have it, my darlings. Our Shop Wild Things copycat floral chandelier using mostly Dollar Tree items with some help from Amazon.com. Isn't she beautiful? Now, of course, if you would want to add maybe length to the chandelier, you could simply 
extend your floral garlands by adding them to what is already there if you wanted your chandelier to be fuller in look of flowers all you would have to do is either add more flowers to it or purchase a smaller wreath form if you wanted to add even more crystals it, it would be just a matter of stringing more of those crystal garlands to the wreath form underneath and then of course if you wanted more or less lighting all you would have to do is make more holes with your soldering iron or create less customization is completely up to you and of course we did this for all of fifty dollars when this is currently being sold on the internet for two hundred seventy nine dollars and ninety nine cents yes guys we did this yes we did my darlings if you have found value in this video kindly be sure to give it a thumbs up as well as leave me a comment in the comment section below to my Danny's darlings I just want to say a huge thank you and give you guys such a huge big collective warm hug and squeeze for all of your encouragement all of your comments all of your questions your thumbs up your hearts your kisses please know that i appreciate you all if you are not yet a danny's darlings and just happen to stumble across my channel today please be sure to consider subscribing and pressing that notification button to ensure that you are made aware when another one of my videos have been published listen as usual and as always it has been a pleasure learning from and crafting with you guys today why buy when we can diy until next time my loves my darlings i say to you guys please take care of yourself for me out there know that i love you all and until next time bye now